Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. Now, in our last project, we updated a very traditional ottoman, and there were a few questions that were emailed to me. One was about the fitting of the fabric, and then the other thing was about how I attached the fabric around the legs of the ottoman. Well, I have updated that video. It's only three and a half minutes, and it is attached to the end of this video. So please watch this video in its entirety. So our $5 ottoman is done. Now let's work on our two free chairs. Now these Queen Anne style chairs would cost me around $350 per chair to have reupholstered. So I'm pretty sure that if I study them carefully, I can figure it out. Now I thoroughly inspected both of the chairs before we began to rip fabric off of them and they are in excellent condition. I'm pleasantly surprised. Now, using an upholstery guide that I purchased about three years ago, I labeled all of the parts of this chair from the front band to the cushion to the inside arm on the left and on the right, the inside back as well as the outside back. And then you also have the outside arm on the left and on the right. And I did this because I'm going to use these parts as templates to cut the fabric. I hate to waste fabric and what better way to make a pattern. Now guys, I did not film the removal of the fabric. Our oldest son was on summer break and he had two weeks to just relax, but I gave him a little project. So he just removed the fabric for me. I had him to pull the pieces off in whole pieces. Hopefully I would get enough between the two chairs to have a full pattern for one chair. And he managed to get this done in about four hours so he could hurry up and go back to bed. Now this cotton style batting is my least favorite batting. I can't stand this stuff. So I'm definitely getting rid of that. This foam, getting rid of that. And this batting underneath, I'm not sure of the name of it, but it is going away as well. Now looking around the backside, it looks like the webbing is in pretty good shape. So I'll just need to stretch it and tighten it up a little bit, or I might just add a few pieces. Now I'm quickly tossing that cotton style batting into the trash, but I'm setting aside the actual foam because it's going to be a template for cutting my new foam. Now these chairs in Ottoman are probably about 40 years old and that means the hardware is also just as old. The staples were difficult to pull out and they were breaking in half. So I decided to take a small hammer and just nail them into the furniture flush so that they aren't sticking up. So this is what we accomplished on day one. Now I'm feeling pretty confident that I have a lot of the things that I will need to complete this project already. So I start by taking inventory of the things that I have at home. Now, over two years ago, I put together this upholstery tote and I started to shop for my supplies on a budget. As you can see, I've got the rubber mallet and I've got box cutters, staple pullers and things like that. And even nail heads. I ordered stuff online from Amazon based upon the things that I saw in this upholstery book. And I made my list so that I would always have the standard supplies. So whether they were $9 or $5, I would bring them home and put them into this bin. And having this organizational system has saved me a lot of time and money. Now, according to the upholstery yardage chart, you can find them on Pinterest. These two chairs will take five yards of fabric each. That's 10 yards. This is why using the old pieces as templates will save you money. Now I am combining two fabrics, one solid and one print. This fabric was purchased at Forsyth Fabrics in Atlanta. It was $25 a yard. I got five yards of it and hello, it was a gift. Now I purchased this fabric from Hobby Lobby in October of 2016. And yes, I got 40% off. Now I measured the horizontal length of the inside bag across the cushion and down the front band. So this is how I came up with two rolls of poly foam. I purchased them separately on two separate days so I could get the 40% off each one of them. Now I purchased three yards of this fluffy style of batting and I got it from Joann's for $16. They had a 70% off deal. Now I purchased this heavier batting for about $24 and then another 40% off 
for six yards at Hobby Lobby. This is jute webbing. It supports the bottom and the backs of your chairs. I got it for $1.49 a yard, three yards, and 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I found this tack strip at Walmart. Don't quote me, but I think it's around $5. Now, one day ago, I purchased this dust cover fabric, five yards of it, from Walmart for $6.97. And upholstery pens for $3.64 at Walmart. And lastly, I wanted to stain the legs of the chairs. So I'm using this Kona or Stolian stain. Got it from Walmart for about $5. And then of course, this protective clear finish. I found that at Lowe's and it is also about $5. Well, now that we've used our brain and done our inventory, let's work with our hands. I lightly sanded the legs of the chairs and then wiped them down to remove all the dust. And then I applied the stain. Now, just like it said on the label, one coat of this stain will dry in one hour. I was impressed. I applied my top coat finish with a sponge brush. Yeah, here's the before and here's the after. Don't you think that looks much better? And by the way, these bed risers are perfect for all of my upholstery projects. Now, our newly painted chair legs were left to dry overnight. Now that little tube-like foam around the edge was already there. I didn't touch it or try to remove it. It makes your seat cushion edges look smooth and it keeps all of the contents in place. Now our trash pickup is tomorrow and I'm so motivated by that timeline. I've got the foam, the old cushion lying on the foam, shall I say, and I'm going to trace around it and then I'm going to cut it out with my new carving knife. Now I'm adding about an extra inch to an inch and a half around the edges because our foam has experienced some shrinkage over the years. And based on how I laid it out, I was able to cut one inside back and one seat cushion from each roll of foam and I had some left over. And by the way, my little carving knife was $9.97 from Walmart. Now this batting resembled what was originally there and that's why I decided to go with it. So it is basically two ply because I folded it in half and I'm stapling it inside of that trim that I did not disturb. And that's what's going to be in place underneath the foam. And then I trimmed the edges. Don't worry, we'll just fold it inward so that the foam will lay directly on top of it. Now, I prefer not to use spray adhesives when doing upholstery. It makes me itch. So I've decided to try and avoid it every way possible. Now, I've gone from a one inch foam to a two inch foam. Now, the chairs to be nice and comfortable. They're going to be in a master bedroom. So I am tucking that foam underneath all of the edges along the side and in the back. Now I'm using a pair of scissors to cut little splits along the inside arm, underneath the outside arm, so I can make sure that this foam lays flat before I actually do the major trimming. Again, no spray adhesives for me. And for the back, just cut away a little square right there in the corner. Then tuck the foam underneath the inside arm frame and underneath the back of the chair. Now, as I was stapling the foam around the front of the chair, I was constantly lifting it up because I wasn't sure if I was stapling directly into that foam trim or if I was going beyond it. Now, at this point, I let my electric knife do the work. I was careful to keep my knife away from the top of the seat cushion as well as from the edge of the chair. Now keep in mind, I'm going to be laying on a sheet of batting. So you're not going to see any of these rough indentations on the foam left behind by the knife. So now we have our foam lying on the back of the chair. We're not adding any batting to the back of the chair. We're just placing our foam on top of that facing, which is on top of the webbing, those little stripes going across. Now, we do not push the foam underneath the edge of the chair in the back. You want your fabric to be able to go through there very easily. So I'm going to staple the edge of the foam to the bottom of that back. There's a board that runs directly across there. So no tucking of the foam that is located on the inside back of the chair. 
Yep, I'm stapling directly into the board. And I would say maybe about 16 staples will do. And keep in mind that you are going to add bedding on top of your foam and fabric so it'll be nice and smooth. Now I wanted my foam on the back of the chair to be nice and snug. So here's what I did. I took the chair and I placed it face down. I pulled the foam around the edges of the back of the chair and I stapled the foam to the back of the chair. Not a lot of staples, of course. And then once that was snugly in place, I added the staples to hold the foam along the side of the chair, right there along the very edge and then I cut away the excess foam. Now I decided to reinforce the inside arm and I just added a small piece of webbing. You see there I went under the edge of that cardboard and on this outside here I just stapled it directly to the board. Now this armrest had lots of batting around it before, but this time I am using foam. I had some one inch foam left in the garage, so I decided to use that to give it an overstuffed look. Now I'm using some of that scrap foam that was left over from the seat cushion and the back to basically beef up those arms and I want them to be very nice and soft. And then I stapled this one inch green foam around it very tightly of course. Again, no spray adhesive. And the fact that the one inch foam is going to hold in the two inch foam I think that's a bonus and that means that top is going to be nice and soft to the touch. Now the whole purpose around this video is to encourage anyone who has a desire to change their furniture in their home and does not have the finances to support their desire to take what they already have and make it beautiful and start in stages, you know, start saving up, buy little things. Maybe you buy the fabric and maybe you buy the supplies one at a time, but eventually you will get there. So that's why I love doing these kinds of videos. They may be detailed, they may be a little bit longer, but I just feel like there's one person out there who needs this, who needs to change their environment to the best of their ability based upon whatever means they have and that's what these videos are all about so take on the attitude of I am an amateur decorating like a pro in your home and chances are you will be surprised about what you can accomplish now there was a small piece of wood that fell off of one of the armrests so I used a little Gorilla wood glue as well as a couple of screws to put everything back in place. Just a minor repair. Now you don't have to do this but I took a precaution. I measured the seat as well as the back. I just wanted to make sure that when I cut my pieces of batting that they were large enough to be tucked along the sides and over the front of the chair and the back before I stapled them. Now, if you're like me and you've got problems with your joints or your bones and things like that, then use pliers. They will help you tremendously with all of the pulling and tugging of fabric. They just eliminate so much strain on your arm and on your wrist and on your fingers. Now, I made a mistake in cutting the batting for the armrest. It should have been long enough to go underneath the seat cushion. I had to later add a piece and you will see that later on. Now, I applied batting over all of the areas that had foam, but for the seat cushion area, I should have cut that piece a little bit larger. That way, it would have covered the front band of the chair. You'll see that I corrected that mistake as well. Okay, I've had my coffee and now let's have some fun with fabric. You can purchase these large rolls of paper from Lowe's for around $11. I lay out my pattern pieces, I trace around them, and I'm also able to label directly onto the paper. Just any additional notes as far as seam allowances or the direction of the fabric, like marking the center. And the other thing is take note of this fabric with this little extra piece of tan fabric on the end. That's there for a reason. It allows you to pull the fabric through the opening in the back, and that's a good thing. It gives it that extra tightness. Now I'm going to take advantage of that tip. 
Now these little arrows help me to identify how many splits to put into the new fabric. Just duplicating what was there before is a big help. Now using my sewing skills really does come in handy here because I know that you can take a pattern that represents maybe four pieces and they're all identical, but one's on the left and one on the right. And all you have to do is turn that pattern over and cut on the reverse side so that way you'd have your additional pieces for the opposite side. Does that make sense? Now, if you're in love with fabric with prints and medallions on them, you always need to buy extra because you need to center those medallions. I put that C using painter's tape in the center of the design. And it has to be centered on the back and on the seat. So even though this is not a sewing project, I'm going to use these pieces to center the design in the center of the back of the chair and in the seat cushion of the chair before I actually cut them with the scissors. Now, as you can see, I folded my pattern in half. And once you've cut half of the fabric, just flip it over and cut the other side and you're perfectly centered. This is how I am able to do upholstery with any kind of fabric. And to my potential Notions sponsors, electric shears please. Hint, hint. Now my son was able to salvage one of the pieces of the arm panels and now I can create my own design. I think it's great to write things down. I have here that I need four of these arm panels. The right sides of my fabric are facing each other so that's something to keep in mind. Now here I'm measuring the fabric that goes over the inside arm around the armrest and yeah this looks like it's gonna work out pretty good and yeah I did label them left and right now I cut all of my fabric in one day fabric for the ottoman and fabric for two chairs now today's coffee tasted even better it's time to apply fabric start by tucking the fabric around the armrest. Now I knew going into this that the armrest would be the most tedious part of this project. I had to make sure that the fabric fits snugly all the time. So I constantly had to pull the fabric, make sure the grain lines were straight, and then also make sure that it pulled through straight from the outside or shall I say from the inside to the outside. Now I was constantly checking to make sure that the fabric was pulled through the opening in the back of the chair and then I was also looking underneath the armrest to make sure that the fabric was pulled through there. I was making sure that I got the smoothness that I wanted on the armrest before I began to staple it. And once I saw that the fabric was smooth after all of those tiny little cuts I stapled it. Now, I don't normally work with my stapler turned upside down, but the area underneath the armrest is very narrow. Now, keep in mind, I am working on two chairs. Well, so far, so good, guys. Let's keep going. Now, my adrenaline was really pumping, guys. I was so excited with the progress that I had made. I placed the seat cushion fabric down, and I wanted to finish up the armrest really quickly. So I've got my pleats in place using the upholstery pens, and now it's time to start stapling those down. Now, after I completed the first armrest, I had a little rhythm going. For the pleats, I would staple down a pleat, and then I would add a staple staple down a pleat and then add a staple so it was like every other one until I got all five pleats done and then I trimmed away the excess fabric now the outside arm is attached using the tack strip so you just simply lay down the strip and then staple it in place and remember to cover up those staples that were there earlier from the attachment of the inside arm. Now a lot of people don't like to do upholstery or at least shall I say attempt to do upholstery if the fabric has stripes or designs in it and it's because they have to line up stripes and that's what they call a grain line but this worked out for me and I like it. Now as I stated earlier the front band should have had batting applied to it so I went back took a small piece folded it in half and I stapled it to the front band of the chair. 
Now I learned that applying fabric to the armrest is twofold because you're also going to be applying fabric to the seat cushion. And at the same time, you're cutting away small pieces from the seat cushion to make sure that it fits snug around the edge. You're also wanting to make sure that the fabric on the armrest is snug so in the end, everything looks nice and smooth. So it was a lot of cutting away of small pieces, but not doing too much too fast. And this is something that you're just going to have to play with. Now this fabric easily frays. So I'm using my hot glue gun to put glue on the back side of the area that I might have to be concerned about. But this glue is gonna solve all of my problems. Let it dry and tuck it back inside. Okay, so I am back from lunch and here's what we got. We've got our fabric on the back and on the seat. The center lines up perfectly. And now all I will have to do is finish off the armrest on the outside and we'll trim away around that front panel there. So when we place our panel on top of that, it'll lay nice and flat. Yep, let's go ahead and get started. Now these are stretching pliers for upholstery. I love them. I found them on Amazon about two years ago when I began to put together my little storage bin. I paid around $8 for them. They just help your wrist so much. You just grip the fabric and the weight of them is about what an, one and a half to two pounds and it does the stretching for you. Isn't that great? You really should get a pair if you plan on doing any kind of upholstery projects. Now, once you've stapled the back, then staple the sides of the fabric. But do keep in mind, you do not want to off-center the fabric by pulling it too tight on the sides. So it may be best to put a couple of staples on both sides just to make sure that everything remains centered. Now the seat cushion has been attached on the back and now fully attached on the side. So we just trim away the excess. Now, just like I had the afterthought to add the batting to the front band of the chair, so that area would be nice and soft. I also decided to add the batting to the sides of the chair. Next, I stapled the outside arm of the fabric, leaving both of the ends on the left and on the right open. Now I am pulling the fabric from the outside arm into the front panel. Now this project had its share of trials and errors, but I'm so happy that I did it. Now I was a little concerned about the sharpness of that corner, so I placed a small piece of batting there just to give it a little curve. And then, of course, I stapled around it. And then you just staple your fabric from the sides of the arm panels to the front panel. What you want to do is try and stay in the center of that wood when you're stapling because that's going to make sure that, that fabric doesn't buckle inward. And the other thing is do all of the arms and the seats, etc. at the same time, because once you figure out how it's done, it's going to become so much easier after the first one. Now to me, this is where it gets easier. You trim away all of the excess fabric around the arm panel, and now you're getting ready to put a cover on it. That's why you don't want to have so much fabric underneath it that'll push it away. So we're getting ready to make a panel to cover this area. Okay guys, now you're not gonna believe what I did to get my arm panel done. I basically took a sheet of paper and I laid it in front of the armrest. And then I trace it with a pencil from underneath. No ink because I don't want to put any spots on my chair. And that basically was it. That's how I created my template for the arm panel. Now I wanted to make sure that the panel was in alignment with the wooden surface underneath because I am going to apply tacks to that area. And like I said before, you're going to have to play with these things until you find a certain size or a certain design that you're looking for. Next time around, I think I'll create my panel before I apply fabric. 
So here's the next step. I needed some thick cardboard to go underneath the fabric that's going to be on the arm panel. And the thing is, I was not about to head to the store. So guys, I got a little creative. It just so happens that this writing pad was turned upside down and I thought, hey, I'll just use the cardboard on the back of it. And it was absolutely perfect. I placed my template on top of it. I traced it and yep, it was the perfect fit and the perfect, the perfect thickness. So now let's get to work on our arm panels. I have my piece of cardboard laying on top and now all I need is a little batting. This was just a little scrap piece left over. I'm raising it up because I'm using that Sharpie and I don't want to risk it going onto my seat cushion. After tracing the panel, I am cutting out of the batting. Of course, fold it in half. You can cut two pieces at one time. And here I'm just double checking to make sure that I have the correct size cuts. Now I lightly applied hot glue around the edge of the cardboard. Just wanted to adhere the batting to it, but I didn't want to do too much of the hot glue. And then I folded the fabric, which was trimmed down fabric from the original cut, around the cardboard. And of course, again, do not put too much hot glue there. Remember, my tacks are going to be going through the cardboard. And around those curved edges, I just pinch the fabric. That way I get a very smooth edge on the panel. And remember to be careful, lightly apply the hot glue, even if that means turning the hot glue gun, the tip of it to the side and smoothing out that hot glue. And the next thing you want to do is trim away the excess fabric. Remember those little pinch tucks that I was doing? It's easy to cut those away with your scissors. These are buttonhole scissors that I'm using. I've had them a very long time and they are very, very sharp. I pinned the panel to the front of the armrest and I liked what I saw. Now I ordered several bags of these tacks a couple of years ago and I don't even know the source but I did get them on Amazon. They were very inexpensive and they are a nickel so it's really time to get rid of them. Now I really like using these smaller pliers to hold down my tacks so I don't hurt my fingers. And a little piece of fabric just to continue tapping them in. I did try the tip of attaching a small piece of fabric to the tip of my hammer with just a rubber band but I really need to see the tacks so this is why I prefer to use those pliers and then go back with the small piece of fabric and just tap them in. Now, even though this is my first time working on this chair, I still wanted to make sure that it looked as neat as possible. So I was very aware of the edge of the panel along the side of the chair, which, you know, there's a board underneath there. And so I wanted to make sure those tacks were going into the board. So as I worked my way down to the bottom curb of the arm panel, I decided to apply a little hot glue underneath my panel to make sure that it stayed in place and that I stayed on track. And this is the result of the first panel install. So I come all the way down to the very corner of the seat and then we're going to take the fabric here and fold it over the sides and then staple it under and then we will be done with the installation of the seat cushion. Now, when it comes to the corners of the chairs, I never really mastered the art of maneuvering the fabric around these sharp corners. I tried to do all these cuts, but I was so nervous about making the wrong cut that I would cut too deep into the fabric. And I didn't have any of this stripe fabric to spare. So yeah, you will certainly find some awkward moments. Now, while I was working on those armrests, I know you noticed that I also stapled the back of the seat cushion and I also stapled the sides since they would be enclosed inside of the inside arm. 
So basically, once we wrap up the front band, we now have our fully installed seat cushion. I am cutting away the bedding along the legs of the chair so that I can tuck it under and staple it down on the sides as well as across the front of the band. And once that's done, you want to make sure that all of the areas are tucked in neatly. Now we trim away the fabric on the sides. Just pull it snugly with your pliers if you need them and just staple them underneath the chair. Now, whenever I window shop, I always look at how things are made that I really would like to own. Do you do that? Well, I noticed that a chair that I had my eye on had just a simple fold right there around the front band. The fabric was just folded down. So I'm going to try that. I just cut away the excess fabric and then basically you tuck the fabric under itself around the corner. And that's basically it. I stapled the fabric along the sides first and then I did a simple little tuck of the fabric along the front band. Now as I'm gently stretching the fabric, I'm vertically stapling just three staples into the fabric. And now I'm adding three more staples diagonally toward the corner. I trimmed away the excess fabric from around the leg of the chair and then I tucked the fabric under so that it would lay nice and smooth. And once again, I stapled the fabric. Now the fabric around the corner looks a little puffy to me, so here's what I decided to do. I took my hot glue gun and I applied a little bit of glue away from the edge of the fold so that everything would lay flat and I didn't want you to see hot glue from the outside so with a little pressure from my hand for a couple of seconds it worked out. Between the days of working on these chairs I am working out, I'm working, I'm volunteering, I'm taking care of my family, I'm really busy so wherever I can put in a couple of hours that's exactly what I'm doing. Well, this is it guys. I placed the fabric on the back of the chair and I am verifying that the design is in the very center from the center of the back all the way down to the seat cushion. So now it is time to start stapling. This is all or nothing. Let's just dive in. I start stapling the back of the fabric in the very center. Just want to make sure that everything remains lined up. And I put about four or five of them there just to hold it in place, just in case I have to remove these for some reason. I tuck the fabric underneath and pulled it through in the very back. You see where pliers come in handy? Yep. You don't want to strain your wrist or your fingers. And now I add a couple of staples there to hold it in place before I start to staple the sides of the fabric. So now we're back to the top. Let's staple the fabric all the way across the top. And you want to make sure that you go from side to side. That way you put equal pressure on the fabric as you're stapling. Now, I did not staple all the way across. I stopped about a half inch away from the corner. Next, I turned the chair on its side and I stapled the fabric to the back of the chair, very close to the inside edge of that board. So basically, I'm cutting a very small split at the corner of this fabric right here in the corner so I can kind of tuck it around that board that I shared with you earlier. And then once the sides and the top of the inside back were done, I stapled the fabric to the back of the seat cushion in the back of the chair. Okay, now you just saw some strips of brown fabric sticking out of the back of the chair. Well, those are strips of fabric that I applied to this section of the inside back. I wanted to pull it tighter. That is solely optional, guys. You do not have to do that. Here's what I did. I took a needle and thread. I stitched the pieces to the edge of the fabric, and then I just pulled it through. It's just over and under stitch, something very, very simple. I then pushed the fabric back through and then pulled it through the back 
and then I stapled it down. That made it tighter around the edge. Again, this is totally optional. You do not have to do this. And remember, I'm working on two chairs at the same time. And one more time, let me say this, this step is optional. Staple, staple, staple. Okay, now there's about to be a hallelujah moment. We are here. We're getting ready to do the outside back of the chair. Let's do it. So now, once again, I need to use the upholstery tack strip, the cardboard one. And I also need to use this flexible tack strip. It's made of metal and basically it can bend all over the place, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use these. They came with the chair. I'm going to recycle them and they are a whole lot stronger than the flexible ones. Now, I love this scalloped edge on this chair, so I decided to become adventurous. I pinned the fabric in the exact same shape, and those pins will actually put an indentation in the fabric, so I will see exactly where to staple that tack strip, and then I'll have a nice, smooth edge. Now, leaving the pins in place, I applied some staples just a little bit below that indented line that I got from the folding of the fabric over the pins. Now, when I was applying this cardboard stripping, I was very careful not to tear it. And believe me, it's thick enough and it really isn't that fragile. So guys, I just basically bent it when I could just a little bit. And when I needed to curve it a little bit more, I used my small shears and cut little tiny splits into it. And then I would fold it in a direction that I wanted it to bend. Now for those areas where I did a lot of little cuts, I reinforced it with just a small piece directly on top of that area. And I stopped stapling the strip about one half of an inch away from the edge. Now this is another pioneer moment for me. You basically insert the metal tack strip underneath the fabric and my measurement guide was basically the edge of the chair and so now you basically turn that metal tack strip under and use your mallet and just gently hammer it down so that was pretty easy i was really impressed with how well this came out but be careful that when you're pushing those tacks through the fabric you don't push one of them into your finger And you basically want to work from side to side as you move gradually down the back of the chair. That way you're stretching the fabric directly across. This is a small mallet. I really needed a large one and I have the fabric on the tip of it to make sure that I don't apply any of that black rubber on the back of the chair. Now the fabric that I'm using on the back of the chair is so thick, I did not bother to add batting or any type of lining. It's just so thick. And perhaps I should have cut away some of the fabric from the inside back of the chair around the edges, but I didn't. I stretched the fabric as I stapled it underneath the chair. Sorry, I didn't film that. And lastly, at exactly 11.33 p.m. on a Saturday night, I added the dust cover. And hallelujah, I am done. Now it is so rewarding to have created a beautiful space like this to read or watch TV. When I turn the corner and see this setup, it's very relaxing and calming and there are two chairs as opposed to one chair that we had there for a very long time. And like I said, this was indeed a learning process and I'm really happy that I took on the challenge. So I hope that you're inspired to have an adventure like this with a piece of furniture or something that you find and maybe even inherit and just give it a quick update with a piece of fabric. 
And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe today. And remember, if you're interested in seeing the updated Ottoman makeover where I clarify just a few things, then please stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching and remember, stay in prayer and stay creative. Now this is an attached cushion ottoman with a skirt that I got for $5. Removing the skirt from the ottoman as well as the fabric was really easy. Now my goal is to have an ottoman with exposed legs and clean lines, something that's very modern. Now using a marker, I traced an outline of the old cushion onto the new cushion. The old foam was 5 inches and the new foam is 4 inches. I placed my new foam on top of the old ottoman base. I added multiple layers of batting so the edges of my foam would be smooth. I applied multiple rows of staples around the bottom of the ottoman. I wanted to make sure that foam didn't move at all. Now I love using this large roll of brown paper to make templates and crafts. You can buy these at Lowe's for around $11. So you're going to need to take a couple of measurements. You already have your template for your fabric to go on the top, but you're going to need a band that goes all the way around the ottoman. So you'll need to measure the height as well as the diameter of the ottoman. I wrote the information down on the back of my template and of course I allowed enough for a seam allowance. Then it was time to do an actual fitting. Now this is the part that I did not include in the earlier video, the actual fitting of the fabric. You turn the fabric inside out and then you use straight pins or upholstery pins to pin the fabric together. You make your seam line with the pins. You can use clips, straight pins as well. But nevertheless, while you're pinning it, stretch the fabric as tight as you possibly can. And then all you have to do is slide it off and give it a quick stitch on the sewing machine. The first thing I did was to stitch the band, just one single seam. It's about 12 inches long. This will be in the center of the back of the ottoman. Now you want to attach the band to the top piece of fabric. Just follow that line of pins all the way around. Slide your cover back onto your ottoman. Now I pulled the fabric tightly with my pliers while I was stapling it to the bottom of the ottoman. And always start to staple in the middle and work your way outward. Now remember to keep your scissors handy because you'll need them to maneuver around the legs of the ottoman. Now for the legs, all you have to do is make two splits. That's on the left and on the right. You do not cut the one facing the corner. Again, just two splits and then fold the fabric inward underneath and staple down both sides. That's it. So the two arrows mark the places where I made the two cuts. And to get rid of some old fabric, I made it into a dust cover for the bottom of the ottoman. Now, if you are using lightweight fabric and you don't have a sewing machine, then you can take it to a seamstress or someone that does alterations. As long as your pins are nice and snug, they can run this quick little seam down the back and around the top. You take it back home and fit it on top of your ottoman and you're good to go. They'll probably charge you about $20. Now this furniture transformation was totally worth it. Please like and share this video. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so today. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. And remember, stay in prayer and stay creative.